Countless champions have been crowned throughout the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But what about the underdogs, the dark horses, the decks that upon first glance make you question everything you thought you knew about the game? In this series, both MBT and myself will be showcasing some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s wackiest unsung heroes. Each episode will feature new decks, new strategies, and the results will be unpredictable. You've seen the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is the history of Jank. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. It's no secret that over the last couple of weeks on History of Jank, we've been looking at some of the worst of the worst when it comes to decks printed for Yu-Gi-Oh! But today, I'm happy to present something that almost resembles a competent strategy, digital bugs. So much so does it represent a competent strategy, I was able to find a deck breakdown by the one the only Doug! What is up guys, DZ here, and if you have tried to read through the digital bugs, you might have gotten confused because they all have a ton of text. Some things never change. Anyway, the Digital Bugs were a series of cards released in like 2016, and you're probably familiar with a significant amount of these cards just because they had a lot of crossover appeal in other decks. Uh, Corbage, for instance, was incredibly playable in Burning Abyss as a card that could really turn the mirror on its head, removing a monster in defense position without even having to take that monster and place it in the graveyard. Great news if you're facing down a Beatrice. Rhinosbus was very powerful in early Duel Links because you would make Insector Exabeetle, detached to Material for Rhinos Bus, and not a lot can stand up to this card in a format with a truncated card pool. But in the TCG, unfortunately, these cards never took off. And why is that? Well, a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, there's not very many of them. Uh, these are a series of level 3 insect monsters that can all special summon other level 3 insect monsters from the hand to overlay for very powerful rank 3 insect exes. But outside of Web Soldier, Cocoon Dancer, and Centibit, there aren't any others? So as a result, we're playing some other level 3 insect monsters, and those are not very strong. Uh, we're playing Bocce Bocce Bocce, Electromagnetic Bagworm, and Magnetic Mosquito, functionally just for filler space. Additionally, what these cards do is very telegraphed. They aim to overlay for Digital Bug Radiator, which can detach two Xyz materials from this card, change the battle position of a monster your opponent controls, and negate its effects, or... You can detach both Xyz materials to rank up into Digital Bug Corbage, a rank 5 that has the ability to shuffle a defense position monster your opponent controls into the deck, and if the battle position of a monster on the field is changed, you can attach an insect-type monster from your graveyard to this card as Xyz material. If you do that instead, detaching the newly attached card and the Skiradiator that's under it nets you a Rhinos Bus, which can be Xyz summoned by detaching two Xyz materials from a rank 5 or 6 insect-type Xyz monster you control. Then, if it attacks the defense position monster, it inflicts piercing, and once per turn, can detach an Xyz from this card to destroy the face of monster or monsters your opponent controls with the highest defense. It's a non-targeting Dryden with piercing, is always how I've described it, and uh, that sounds pretty powerful during this period, though it does require a lot of setup. As a result, we've supplemented all of these level 3 insects with some of the best level 3 cards in the game, things like Speedroid Teratop and Speedroid Takatomborg, as well as some cards that modulate the attack and defense position of cards that are on the field, things like Book of Eclipse and Swords of Concealing Light, to trigger a lot of the secondary effects of the digital bugs. We're also playing Sargasso the DD Battlefield. I don't want to give away why. Guess in the comments. I'll let you know if you're right. With that, let's get into the card by card. First up is Bocce Bocce Bocce, don't worry about its effect. Three copies of Digital Bug Centipit. This can't be used as an Xyz material except for an insect type monster, and once per turn when it's switched from attack position to defense position, allows you to special summon a level three insect monster from your deck in defense. If a monster is Xyz summoned using this card on the field, it can attack all defense position monsters your opponent controls once each. Digital Bug Cocoon Denser also can't be used as anything but material for an insect monster, and once per turn if it's in attack position, you can target a level three insect type monster in your your graveyard, switch this to defense, and special that monster in defense position. If a monster is Xyz summoned using this material, it gains the effect to uh, our maybes. And finally, we have Digital Bug Web Soldier, which allows you to target a face-up attack position monster you control, change it to defense position, and if you do, especially level 3 insect type monster from your hand in defense position. I think you are meant to go like Web Soldier, target Centibit, Centibit, summon Cocoon Denser, uh, Cocoon Denser, Reborn something from the graveyard to make like 2 or 3 uh, level 3 Xyz monsters on the same turn.
turn. Um, if this is part of an Xyz monster, uh, the defense of all your monsters uh, your opponent controls become zero, and they get changed to defense. After that, we've got Bagworm and Magnetic Mosquito, which have like anti-machine effects, trigger on flip, and then three copies of Maxi, one Takatan Borg, three Terra Top. After that, we've got three Book of Eclipse, three Swords of Concealing Light, three Twin Twisters, three Sargasso, and three Bug Emergency. This card allows you to target two level three insect type monsters in your graveyard. You special summon them, their effects are negated, and you can banish this card in an Xyz monster from your graveyard. The levels of all level three insect type monsters you currently control become equal to the banished monsters rank until the end of the turn and you're locked into insects it's uh, like an evo singularity but you gotta like squint in the side we've got some kaijus we've got book of moon we've got solemn strikes we've got quakings and we've got a warning in the extra we've got corbage we've got rhinosbus we've got scarator we've got the other insect rank three uh giga brilliant and then just some general threes nightmare shark engineer break sword grand pulse and totem bird really excited to pilot this deck it's kind of neat uh and i uh i hope you all get buggy all right, here's Alex. Oh boy, this is uh, this was gonna be an episode, all right. So most of you might remember a Morphage Goliath from like Blue Eyes decks or you know Dragon Link for that matter. Th it may surprise you to know that it actually comes from an archetype, but boy, is this an archetype that uh, maybe just shouldn't have existed. Uh, so Amorphages are interesting because they all have the monster effect that neither player can special summon monsters from the extra deck except for Amorphages and. Anytime you have a built-in floodgate into a monster, like, that's obviously going to spell for a good time. But in any case, this deck needs to have some sort of major drawback, obviously, because otherwise, if you just have an entire deck of monster floodgates, clearly there's going to be some sort of issue there. So we're going to try out Amorphages uh, in their pure form and buckle up, because this is probably not going to be very fun uh, for Joseph, one, if we can, you know, actually pop off, but two, the audience, considering... Very slow and painful death with this deck. So what are we trying to do with this deck? Well, essentially, all of the Amorphages in the Pendulum scale have an ability to sort of lock the opponent out of doing something. Now, obviously, there's only two Pendulum scales, and the most important part is locking them out of the extra deck, but... If you're not, if your opponent's not playing an extra deck reliant deck, then like your deck literally does nothing and you're probably just going to get canned. So let's do the card by card. Uh, we're playing a Kaiju package in here because we just need to have ways to deal with some things. And it's nice to just get other bodies on the field to make the game go a little bit quicker. You'll understand why that is when we actually get to the games, I imagine. And then we have all the Amorphages. These, what's cool is, is that these are all based off of like the seven deadly sins, but um, not for the better considering it, it feels like pure agony if you have to play against this deck. So as I mentioned, all of them have a pendulum scale effect to prevent your opponent from doing something. So Envy makes it so that neither player can activate cards or effects as chain link two or higher. Goliath makes it so that any card that's sent to the graveyard is banished instead. Greed makes it so that trap cards uh, or their effects cannot be activated except for Amorphage cards. Lechery is the same except for spells. Pride says uh, that neither player can take effect damage. Sloth makes it so that neither player can add cards from deck to hand except by drawing them. And Wrath makes it so that neither player can tribute monsters monsters except for Amorphage monsters. Now, aside from that, they all have either a respective three or five scale. So what you're trying to do is essentially is create a sort of lock where, and let's say hypothetically, you can go greed to prevent them from using traps, lechery to stop them from using spells. And if you pendulum summon any of these out or tribute summon in the case of Sloth or Goliath, then now all of a sudden they can't special summon from the extra deck, can't use spell cards, can't use trap cards. Fun deck, right? The awkward part of this deck is that like some of these can't be pendulum summoned. Like Lechery is a two and their scales only go from three to five. Same thing goes for Sloth and Goliath because it's level six and eight respectively. So you have to tribute summon for stuff like Sloth and Goliath and that can just be kind of awkward sometimes. And uh, I imagine that will probably come up. I should also mention that all the Amorphages as pendulum effects have the effect that once per turn mandatory during your standby phase, tribute one monster or destroy this card. So this is sort of the balancing mechanism because if you have a monster on the field that's locking your opponent, if you have you have to choose between either tributing that monster and letting them summon from the extra deck again or removing your scale and now you can't pendulum summon it back. And there are ways to circumvent this and that'll get us to the spell cards like a Morphage Infection. So this is a continuous spell that gives all Amorphages 100 attack and defense for each Amorphage card on the field. And if a monster either in your hand or you control is tributed or destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add an Amorphage card from your deck to your hand. So if you have to tribute in the standby phase with Infection up, you're then able to replace that card. And essentially plus, because let's be honest, it's a Pendulum monster, so it's going to the extra deck anyway. So that's a neat little mechanic there. Then we have Amorphous Persona, which gives all Amorphages 300 attack and defense and up to twice per turn. If 
if an Amorphage monster is tributed, you get to draw a card. That's pretty nice because, again, just replenishing your resources for having to get rid of your scales every single turn, essentially. It also has another effect, but we're not using it because we're not doing any ritual shenanigans. And we also have Amorphage Lysis, which decreases all monsters that are not Amorphages by 100 attack and defense. And if a card in your Pendulum Zone is destroyed, you can place an Amorphage Pendulum monster from your deck directly to the Pendulum Zone. So if you have Lysis up, hypothetically, if you have to destroy your own scales, you again get to plus because you can pick whichever scale you want to put and then you can just pendulum summon back whatever got destroyed. So the spells and the traps are supposed to help mitigate the downside and actually generate you advantage so that way you're able to just overwhelm your opponent and take over the game. Uh, it's a bit clunky, but it's a stun strategy, so it does have the ability to just win games for absolutely no reason. You might be wondering why Scapegoat's in here. Uh, purely, it's in here just so you can tribute off Scapegoats instead of having to get rid of your Amorphage cards, because the Amorphage cards say you tribute any monster. It doesn't have to be an Amorphage monster. So, by doing this, that means that you're always going to be able to keep your cards, and that way it helps just build you advantage and keep your board presence. We do have an extra deck. Honestly, I don't think we're going to use it, because we just want to keep all of our stun tools available to us. Uh, the side deck, we've got stuff like Kwaki Meru Drago, because these are all dragons, funny enough, so this could come up. Max C, for obvious reasons. Card of Demise, like, hypothetically could be good in here. Same thing goes for, like, Twin Twister, Strike, and Warning. Like, obviously, these are just decent side deck cards if you're going first or second, but in any case, uh, it'll be interesting to explore a deck like this uh, in its pure form. Some of you may have, like, encountered this at your locals before, but it's a very weird deck. It doesn't really function like many other decks do, and I hope we get to do a good job of showing that off today. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Well, Joseph, how could it possibly get any better than last episode with uh, Celtic Guardian, of all things? Surely we won't be able to beat that this episode. <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping I can beat that. I, ugh, blech, blech. It's all right. I, I, then we're at least playing, like, decks, you know? They're, they're, <laughs> they're strategies. They were printed. You know, that's more than I can say for Celtic Guardian. Yeah, they were they were pack filler, that's for sure. Uh, to be fair, one of the cards I'm playing actually did see play in, in some modern competitive Yu-Gi-Oh!, but uh, only for a very short period of time and not for particularly good reasons. So surely the archetypes themselves will be good. Let's roll the die. Yeah, let's just get it over with. Shout out the patron. Master Anthony Reed, thank you for the support. You got the hand up, my friend? Uh, I do. Uh, I rolled a three. The number of cards in my deck that I can pendulum summon, potentially? I picked a three. Okay. I wonder why. I mean, with the deck that you're playing today, why would you possibly pick a three? Very strange choice on your end. All right, come on. Come on, let's see what we got. Why the hell did I pick to go first with this deck oh my god is that wow. what i'm supposed to be doing best of luck buddy okay so here here's the, here's what we're gonna do so we're gonna go i want to make sure i sequence this properly we're gonna go scale amorphage pride yeah gale amorphage lechery i'm going to pendulum summon are we in master rule three still in no. jank we're in master rule four no we don't have links yet do we no we don't yeah you're right oh yeah so we're still we're still in master rule three okay well i'm always summoning one anyway i just want to make sure it went to the right zone uh amorphage greed so uh, if it's Pendulum Summon, neither player can special summon monsters from the extra deck while this card is face up on the field. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, and then I'm also locked out of spells. Uh, you are locked out of spell cards and their effects, except for Amorphage cards. And then you're also, neither of us is taking effect damage, which I don't think is very relevant, but you know. All right, well, that sucks ass. Um... <laughs> Huh. Fun deck, huh? <laughs> yeah, really interesting. Uh, I guess I will set one, two, three cards and pass. I will draw. So during the standby phase, we're going to have a bit of a problem here. I oh, have some yeah. mandatory effects on these scales. So mm -hmm. they read... Once per turn during the standby phase, I either have to tribute a monster or destroy this card. Now, you might notice an issue here. Yeah. I only have one monster on the field. <laughs> not an issue to me, baby. I mean, that's not an issue to you, of course. Okay, so the question is, how are we going to be able to deal with this? Basically, something's going to have to go, but I just have to decide which cards I want to keep. So I think we're going to keep around a Morphage Lechery. So we're going to sacrifice greed this will go to our extra deck yep and then since i have nothing to sacrifice for pride 
Pride will also go to the extra deck. Now we're going to scale another Amorphage Greed. I am going, yeah, that's fine. I have scales once again, uh, so I will attempt to Pendulum Summon here. We're gonna go for one, put that in defense. And this one actually has attack stats, so we'll put this in attack. Okay. I don't know if I should be scared of your set. <laughs> Kind of just want to get in for damage. Let's uh, let's let's do a bit of poking. Let's see what we're dealing with. All right, it is digital bug sent a bit. Does this do anything when it dies? No. Okay, excellent. All right, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna normal summon digital bug web soldier. Okay. I'm gonna switch it to defense and special summon electromagnetic bagworm from my hand. With its effect, sure. And I'm gonna pass. Just trying to wall up here. Okay. So we'll go standby phase. Uh, yeah. My scale effects are gonna trigger. This time I can easily just get rid of both of my monsters this time. So they'll go. Uh, anything here. Go to main one then. Uh, we'll just try to pendulum summon again. Bring them back out. And uh, with greed active, your traps are also not being able to use be used either. So everything locked out there, which is pretty cool. Uh, the problem is I can kill one thing, but I can't kill two. I can activate this amorphous persona. Oh God. Oh, that's a real problem. Actually, I cannot activate this. Oh, it's not well, an I Amorphage can. card. It's not an Amorphage. It's an Amorphis. Oh. Wow. How could they, how could they fuck that oh. up? <laughs> so we actually cannot activate this. This goes back to hand. Well, that kind of blows. All right, how are we gonna take these things out? That is 1500 defense. Uh, I'm gonna give you this Gamma Seal over your Electromagnetic Bagworm. Okay. In attack position, please. Yeah. Whoa. Let's try that again. There you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm gonna special a Kumungus. Oh, good. We'll go battle. We'll take out the Gamma Seal. Uh-huh. I'll take two And then here. we'll go. Yeah, you'll take two. We'll take out your web soldier, and that'll be the end of my turn. Okay, what is the plan here? Uh, let's special Terror Top. See if we got a, a target for this. I imagine you do. Would you believe that we don't? Huh? Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as it were. Oh, man. And I'm still locked out of the extra. You're locked out of the extra, you're locked out of spells, and you're locked out of traps, yes. <laughs> Awesome. Great, great deck. <laughs> All right, back to you. All right, we'll draw. Uh, we'll do the same thing as before. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll just get him back. Mm -hmm. Very slow and painful deck uh, with this deck. Uh, we did get another one, though. So we'll bring out a Morphage Wrath this time with our Pendulum Summon as well. So sure. Let's actually get a clock on you. Uh, we'll go attack here, mm -hmm. attack here, and 24 direct. Yep. And that's it. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to normal summon Digital Bug Cocoon Soldier. Okay. Cocoon Denser. I was going to say, that's not what that thing is called. <laughs> Here, we'll do it like this. I'm going to normal summon Digital Bug Web Soldier. Target itself. Changes to defense. No, there's no way to do this. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know how I'm doing this without access to the extra. The best I can do is Cocoon Denser summon back Centibit. Okay. But that doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if I didn't have this Kumungus, this actually, this Cocoon Denser could wall up. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm just going to save myself having to Pendulum Summon again mm -hmm. and just go straight to battle phase. Uh, so yep. we'll hit here. Mm -hmm. We'll hit here. And then 1750 direct. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, man. Oh, I was so close on this, but just a little too late. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Thrilling gameplay. <laughs> Well, that was enjoyable. Let's see if this one's any better. That wasn't it? I mean, I, I'm kind of surprised for a jank deck. I have a three card combo that effectively prevents you from doing literally anything. So let's see how this goes. Uh, okay, well, we actually get to play the game today. Uh, we're gonna normal summon Digital Bug Web Soldier. Okay. We're gonna switch this guy to defense position to summon Digital Bug Centibit from our hand. Hey, 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 hey. What did you say about playing the game now? All right, okay. Well, don't worry. I wasn't gonna play it too much. Um, hmm. Well, I wanted to go all the way to Rhino's bus, but we're just going to overlay here. We're going to summon Digital Bug Scaradiator. I'll take a draw. I'll set one, and you're good to go. All right, let's see what this Scaradiator does. As a quick effect. Ooh, it changes battle position and negates effects. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, that's, that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Standby good? Yep. I guess we just go for this. Boo. <laughs> all right. We'll give you our good old friend Gamma Seal. I can yep. uh, find him. I'm, I'm going to take this big guy here. 
There you go. You can have him. We're going to normal summon Amorphage Lechery. Okay. Literally just going to try to get in damage here. Uh, I guess I will activate a Morphage Infection while I'm at it. This will give my Lechery a 100 attack point boost. I'm in. Per card that's on the field. So it goes to 1450. Yeah. You're shaking in your boots now, we'll tag. Take Go 1450 direct. Yep. Uh, second main, I will set a card. And then I will scale a copy of Lechery and pass. Boom. <laughs> oh, I guess <laughs> I'm not the only one with Kaijus. Uh, thinking. Yep. I will activate a Morphage Lysis. What is this? All this really does is sink your Kumungus by... Uh, sinks it by... 300? Actually, a lot of points. Yeah, 300. It's, oh, 400. It's per a Morphage card on the field, and that is, includes itself. Yes. All right. And then my Infection is giving it... I guess I should have done this in a different order then. Uh, so actually, you should have taken an extra 100 damage from that first thing, because this was actually 1550 when it attacked, but now it's 1750. All right. So I have four Amorphage cards. Uh, uh, so this is still going to die, but I'm only going to take 250 here. Uh -huh. I need to make sure the math was right. Uh, this goes to the extra deck. This triggers the infection yep. since uh, a monster was destroyed by battle, and I get to add any Amorphage card from my deck to my hand, which is pretty sweet. So let's grab uh, a copy of Greed. Greed seemed pretty good. I guess this also sinks my... Uh, Godarla down to 24 here. And your Kumungus is only 21 now, I believe. Because there's only three Amorphage cards on the field. This is fucking... This is confusing. This is You're talking about like a Rise shit. Heart Go in ahead. modern Yu-Gi-Oh. God, okay. Standby phase. I have to decide if I want to keep Lechery around or if I want to tribute off the Godarla. I think I want to... I'll get rid of the Godarla. Okay. Uh, that will trigger Infection since it's any monster that was destroyed by battle or tributed. And we'll grab ourselves a copy of, uh, get another copy of Greed. We'll scale Greed. Yep. And we will go ahead and Pendulum Summon. Unfortunately, Lechery is not between three and five. Thank God. So we'll get our copy of Greed here. Uh, this, um feels wrong. I'm going to strike this. You're going to strike the pen summon? Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, okay. Uh, your Kumungus is back to 2k, by the way. And... <clears throat> wow, that sucks. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Stand by main. Oh, that's a yep. hell of a draw. I have no extra deck lock now, so you might be able to make some things happen here. I can't. I'll just hit you for two. We'll go one, two... Draw. Stand by... This kind of sucks, so I don't have any monsters, so I actually have to just lose both of my scales here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't get any effects because I'm not ah, attributing. Nah, uh, uh. Oh no, you I get do the get I get the Lysis. Yeah, Lysis is a thing actually. Okay, so we will trigger Lysis. Yep. Which uh, allows me to just put stuff in my scales, which is pretty sick. It's nice. Uh, I will chain to Lysis. Twin Twister to take out your two back row. Okay, I will activate Bug Emergency. Okay. Uh, and we are going to grab Web Soldier and Centibit. This gives you two guys. And then the other one is another fucking interrupted Kaiju Slumber. <laughs> <laughs> you and I are just both working on these. Okay, so Chain Resolves. You get your guys, Twin Twister pops, and then Lysis uh, only triggers once, unfortunately, but I do get to get anything to my Pendulum Zone, which is pretty sick. Let's just put down... All these scales are the same on these things. Uh, we need a three scale. Get ourselves a Greed. You've got some trap cards in this deck. Yeah. Uh, we have a scale five, so we'll fire it. Uh-oh. And let's pen summon. I only get one, because Greed is... The only one I can get here. Yep. Uh, but I can tribute this greed for a copy of Sloth. Oh, God. Yep. Now, uh, I get to trigger Infection here since I tributed one. Yep. And that is going to bestow me with any other thing that I want. Let's get a Wrath. Yep. So I kind of just want to lock you out. Let's get a, let's get a Lechery. Sure. Uh, so your cards are all being sunk by five. 
Yep. So you already did that to Kamungus. Cool. We'll go... Oh, and I'm gaining 500 for each. This is actually a 2750. Uh, and we'll go just take out the Kumungus. I take 850 here. 850. And then yeah. it gets banished because of Goliath. Correct. Which could be relevant, actually. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Go ahead. <sighs> awesome. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, we'll banish a Kaiju Slumber. I was about to say, you have an out to this, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, we'll go grab Gam CL. Yeah. We'll give you Gam. Uh, so funny enough, this does tribute yes, my it slot, does. so I do yes, get to does. trigger infection. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, we'll grab... The world is my oyster, truly. Uh, we'll grab a Wrath. Why not? This Gamma Seal is going to lose 400, so it's down to 18. We're getting a lot of use out of this new dueling book function, I gotta say. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. Trap cards or their effects. Boy, that's annoying. Okay, let's make um fucking just some guy, you know? Just a lad. I don't have an Amorphage monster, so you're not under a lock. Oh, that's true. Okay. Uh, let's go Giga Brilliant here. Sure. And then we'll detach both of these. Oh, detach both of these. We'll go... Detaching both for what? For this guy. Oh, for Corbage. Gotcha. Oh, I should... Sorry. This is a mandatory trigger as much as I kind of wish it wasn't. So on summon... Uh, so on summon, Giga Brilliant is going to switch Gamsiel to defense position. That's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> uh, we go Corbage here, which I will detach Giga Brilliant to shuffle Gamsiel into the deck. Sure. What did you add off of Greed? I added Wrath. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you know about Lechery. So you know I have Scales. Yeah, that's what I'm a little concerned about. Okay, let's just set one, go to combat. We'll hit for 22. Or way less than 22. Uh, you'll take uh, 18. Yeah. Because uh, you're being sunk by four. Go ahead. That's it? Okay. Uh, we'll draw. Standby, I unfortunately have to get rid of both of our Scales here. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll go to main one. Do you want to do uh, I did get the Field here? Spell. Oh, God. That's disastrous. Uh, it only works... Oh, they get destroyed. You're right. I do get to Lysis. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so Lysis first. What do we want? Uh, let's take another three scale. Uh, let's just get another Wrath. Whatever. Okay. Uh, main one. I did get the field spell. Not under any lock this time. Cool. And so now we have more uh, effects that we need to account for here. So that's not fucking annoying at all. Scale Lechery. Uh, let's Pend. I can go for a few guys here this time. Uh, we can get Double Greed and a Wrath. I guess I should have gotten something bigger. That's okay. It's um, big enough. It's big enough, yeah, especially since you're being sunk by a metric shit ton too. All right, so we've got three, four, five, six, seven. So this thing's 2350. Uh, these things also, but they're in defense, so like I don't really care about them. Uh, and your stuff's being sunk by seven. So you're 1,500, not 1,400. Oh, he's counting Persona. Yeah, Persona. And remember, it's an Amorphous card. It's not yeah. an Amorphage card. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, we'll just go battle. Mm -hmm. Just kill it. Yeah. I'll take 850 here. 850. Uh, and that's all I got. Go ahead. Stand by me. Oh, actually, you take an extra three because the... Yeah, Persona yeah. gives it an extra 300. Yeah. I'm... Adjusting my stats while you think. I don't know how I out this. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Draw. Uh, standby. We have to resolve here. So we can just get rid of both of our greeds. That triggers infection. Uh, I could even trigger Lysis too if I wanted to, if I just wanted to pop another thing, but whatever. Let's get uh, another big guy just so we can start putting a clock on you. I'll just get another Wrath. Yep. Uh, I'll just pend everything out again. Uh, so now everything goes up to by 11. Battle, I'll just start swinging. Yup, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> My god. Try a game three? Yeah, all right. <laughs> This is probably the most annoyed I have ever been in an episode <laughs> of Jank. And it sucks, because these are supposed to be the fun episodes. I guess this is how I felt during Blue-Blooded Oni, so it's only fair. That's 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 true. I can't deny that. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, um, you know, it is what it is. We're going to go Web Soldier, Effective yep. Summon. 
Sure. Okay, no maxi this time. That's nice. Uh, it let's... was sideboarded. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a pendulum deck. Uh, we'll go for a <laughs> Uh huh. Uh, and then we will set one back to you. Standby main. Okay. Uh, terraforming. Yeah. I forgot. I even had the effect of Persona to activate, too, to draw a card. Like, I, there's so many fucking effects to keep track of in this deck. It's crazy. Uh, Persona good? Yeah. Uh, we'll go Greed Lechery. Yes. I will Pen Summon... Okay. Good? Yes. I will Tribute for Sloth. Okay. Uh, this gets buffed by the field spell, so it's 2550. Since I tributed, I get to trigger Persona and draw a card. Battle hit. Absolutely not. <laughs> hit that motherfucker in defense. Yeah. Uh, we'll go second main. I'll just pass it back. Go ahead. Stand by main. That's the literal best yep. draw on my deck. Okay. Well, uh, first and foremost... Let's go combat. Let's get this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's out of here. He's out of here. Uh, regrettably, I don't get to trigger this because he didn't go to the graveyard. Uh, yep. Let's normal summon Cocoon Denser and activate the effect. Sure. I guess we're summoning back Web Soldier. Uh, we're going to overlay for... I don't know. Who cares? It, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. Who's like the most annoying little insect? I guess it's Giga Brilliant, probably. Probably. Uh, we'll detach both of these for Corbage. Mm -hmm. And then... I really want to shuffle it back into the deck, but I can't. There ain't shit in defense position. There is not. There used to be. There did. Uh, Kind of lame. I'm just going to go bug emergency, these two guys. And I uh, wish I had an Xyz monster in the graveyard. Uh, we're going to make another Skiradiator. Back to you. Uh, we'll draw. You're going to draw a lot of cards momentarily. We'll go standby. We have to get rid of our scales, unfortunately. So we'll say bye-bye to them. Uh, main one. Yes. Let's go uh, greed. Yep. Envy. All right, we'll go maxi here. Gross. Uh, it's just upstart uh, goblin. Yeah, at this point. We'll pen summon. Yep. We will bring back greed, wrath, wrath. Sure. Uh, so these are buffed. Guess we'll go battle. I'll try for the Skiradiator. All right, we'll Skiradiator one of these. Sure. And then we'll go Corbage, Attach, uh, Magnetic Mosquito. And then the second Wrath, I'll take out a Skiradiator. That's fine. i go 150 here. 150, yeah. You can afford it. <laughs> uh, that's it. Go ahead. All right, stand by main. This is still pretty annoying. You don't have Spell Negation. I do not. All right, Swords of Concealing Light. Shit. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, we'll go. Yep. <laughs> we'll go Corbage, uh, Attach, Cocoon Dancer. Um, hmm. How do I want to do this? Uh, let's go. Can I just say, while you're thinking, I love that we figured out in like 2016 that Swords of Concealing Light is a good card. Oh, yeah. Activate Cocoon Dancer or activate Corbage, shuffle this back into the deck. Uh, to actual deck, not extra deck. Yep. Uh, we're gonna detach two here for Rhinosbus. The big boy. This I haven't seen him This yet. one's actually good. This one's good. <laughs> he would be able to wipe your board here if it was face up. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we're gonna normal summon, uh, Terror Top and activate the effect. We'll grab Taka Tomborg. We will special Taka Tomborg. Uh, well, we don't really have a Skiradiator left. Um... I think it's probably worth going Totem Bird here. And then we'll go uh, attack. Take Piercing. So I have 300 uh, from this. So I'm going to take 23. Mm -hmm. uh, attack. And take 19 from the Totem. And 19, yeah. Uh, regrettably, Wrath goes to extra because Skiradiator is just never going to oh, trigger. Right. I ain't never getting this guy. All right, go ahead. Draw. Stand by. Lose my scales. Yup. And, uh... Unfortunately, I think you've got this one because I am dead here. So, okay. All right. Yeah, so you, you got to win. Yeah, it you got to win. You got to win. Oh. Um, I guess we could start with my deck. Uh, so, a Morphage, most people might remember this as uh, specifically Goliath, as it was a card that was teched in specifically Blue Eyes decks as uh -huh. a way to just like cheese wins because it sort of just fulfilled the condition of being a dragon that could be easily summoned. 
And, uh, yeah. The, the entire archetype essentially has the same monster effect where neither player can special summon monsters except amor uh, Amorphages. And you would think an archetype that basically where every card is a built-in floodgate is insane, but clearly uh, you could see some of the glaring issues with this deck. I mean, the scales are like self-destructive, although if you mm -hmm. have some of the other uh, spells and traps that are in archetype, they're able to replace themselves and uh, then you can just keep going. So the archetype has to have some sort of downside, but unfortunately it's too much of a downside to really be all that competitive. Uh, they have extremely powerful effects to actually lock your opponent out of playing entirely with uh, gre or greed being able to lock out traps, lechery locks out spells, and you can theoretically make it that it's almost impossible for your opponent to play the game. And I feel like we really saw that in the first game. Uh, the problem is that while, yes, you can get off this crazy lock, you're kind of just hoping for everything to go your way. Like, yes, I got it off against you, but you're playing digital bugs for, <laughs> for what it's worth. Yeah. And against like competitive tier decks, they're going to have a lot more ways to interact. While, yes, they may have, uh, you know, reliance on the extra deck, they don't just operate on one axis for the most part. And if, unfortunately, this was just a deck that was really not able to cobble together much other than just being in a very annoying locals deck since most of this card was, most of this deck rather was pretty low rarity. Yeah, no, um, it, uh, it does, it's frustrating that it doesn't really play well with itself. Uh, yeah. but it did see a ton of play, uh, like you said, in blue eyes and later in dragon link is like the thing yep, you would summon dragon off link. of spheres. Um, yep. Really frustrating stuff. Similarly, Digital Bug uh, did not see really any play whatsoever um, in terms of a pure archetype. Uh, no matter what Doug would tell you, because there is a profile <laughs> still on his channel to this day. I was about to say. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Digital Bugs uh, are interesting. Um, the, the vision is there. You can kind of see what they are meant to do. You know, Bug Emergency looks kind of like Evo Singularity if you just sort of squint really hard, right? Um, Cocoon Denser is Wolf Bark. Uh, Web Soldier unbricks your hand. Centibit is also in the deck. Um, but those are all of the digital bugs. So you can see that we have supplemented the deck with a bunch of level three insects that are terrible. Um, Bagworm, Bachi Bachi Bachi, uh, Magnetic Mosquito uh, are just in here because of their typing for the most part. Uh, the extra deck did have a lot of good guys. Um, Skaradiator is an intensely powerful card, especially for the time period. Uh, Corbage saw a ton of play uh, in Burning Abyss, um, Burning Abyss as a yeah. way to out just like defense position guys. Uh, you could go like Giga Brilliant, Detach 2 for Corbage. It's not even that big of a deal because you're detaching PAs. And then Corbage shuffle back a Beatrice or something, um, yeah. which is really good, especially in the mirror and uh, saw a lot of play for that reason. And Rhino's Bus was incredibly powerful in Duel Links. This is a card just completely out of time. Like, it's shocking that this existed in like 2015 because this is a card that reads like a 2018 card. Uh, destroy mm. all monsters your opponent controls as a quick effect, um, non-targeting Dryden't. Like, it's just incredible. Um, the problem is they intend for you to set it up over the course of several turns by getting additional material attached to Corbage than overlaying for Rhinosbus by using Bug Emergency to modulate some threes into a five so Corbage has material for Rhinosbus. It's neat in that regard, and uh, the payoff is there, um, but there's, <laughs> it sounds weird, there's just not enough good main deck insect monsters worth playing. I think... If there were fans of this archetype, they would be right to be disappointed with the fact that it didn't land. Um, but at its core, it's just an uninspiring archetype anyway. Like, who wants to play with the little bug insects? Right. Like, at least my deck has that going for it. Like, it, it's all these demonic dragons based off of the seven deadly sins. Exactly. Like, I think that just has like that just has like a much higher appeal. Uh, even if you don't like the playstyle as much. No, it's, I don't know, this this was an interesting one uh, towards the end, and it seems to be that that's been the trend lately, where by the time we're done with it, uh, we have a lot to talk about in terms of just how these decks sort of look in a vacuum, but it sucks that just, like, relative to, like, the actual metagame, these were just, like, two decks that just really stood no chance. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So, shout-out to Shout1317, Tim00x3, MBT Play MBTPlayMadolce, Moto, Cameron L. Smith, Phoenix the Immortal, Pony Stark, The Synchro Guy, Dan the Man Hoban, Draconic, Little Fade Leaf, Dylan Hunter, Cody Bretz, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Flannel Daddy, Twinkle Muncher, Matthew Brady, Helios515, I've tried reading cards before, it was horrible, and my guinea pigs had to get me 
Therapy, Cheeks McLapperty, Stolfin Amethyst, Wonder Waffle, MBT Cancel Bio Community Soon, Cancel Bio Committee Soon, Cancel Bio Player Soon, Uncle Brian of Stardust, Nicholas Carpenter, Corvain, and Peyton McGrath. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time.